As we look at this here this evening, I told you there's one thing that really uh, uh, separates the, 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 the people of the church from the church people. And what we're going to look at this here this evening is our, our, our ability to be faithful. And it's not only our ability to be faithful unto our God, but it's also our ability to be faithful unto the church in which we're proclaiming to be a part of. Uh, we look at all these different things, and we're going to look at uh, several different things uh, maybe here this evening. But uh, uh, first and foremost, we're going to go back and say, let a man so account of us as the ministry of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Now, in order for us to go forth and to begin to tell people that we are Christians or that we go to church and that we do this and we do that, uh, one, one thing that uh, what we should really understand is our lives should speak that for us. It's not something that we should have to tell somebody. We shouldn't have to ask somebody, hey, I, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a Christian. Could you please hold your tongue? You know, maybe they don't know you. Maybe they've not been around you. But after being around us for quite some time, it is our lives that should show through that people should desire to act just a little bit differently around us because I shouldn't have to remind people MD if you don't mind brother I'm a preacher don't talk like that you know what I'm saying at some point, people should realize that there's differences within us that we act just a little bit different. As God has called us into, He has called us into a ministry. Uh, and and we, I say that, and you look at me and say, Preacher, are you the only one that's been called into the ministry? No, 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 that's not exactly it. We are all evangelists, if, we, if you will. We are all called to spread and to preach the gospel. We are all called to be instant in season and out of season. We are all should be prepared to preach. Now on Sunday mornings, whenever I get up and come to church, there's been a few times that I have got up here and honestly had absolutely nothing. Any one of you would have been more prepared to preach at that moment than me. That's why we study to show ourselves an approved workman. That's why whenever God, you're, you're sitting up here and you've been standing up here gibber jabbering, you know, for just a few minutes and you're thinking, Lord, I'm really needing you to take control because I really need you to start talking. It's when God starts talking that you're able to move fluidly with him. We are to be accounted faithful. We are to be ministers. We are to be the stewards of this. I want us to understand Moreover, it is required in stewards. We are stewards unto God. We are stewards unto the things in which He has given us. We are to uh, take care of what God has given us. The, uh, and this goes in, in, in depth of so many different directions. If God has given you a Sunday school class, you are to take care of that class. You are to nurture that class. You are to help that class to grow. If He has given you uh, uh, oversight of a, 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 of a church, over a, a women's group, over a men's group, over a, 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 just a, a, a private Bible study of, of whomever, you are to take care of these things. You're to take care. Of, you're to take it very seriously. If God has blessed you with uh, mass fortunes, you are to take care of that in a manner that He sees fit. And if He has blessed you with twenty five cents. You are to use that according to His glory as well. You are to take what God has given you and you are to be a good steward of it and not throw all that God has given you into the trash. Amen. That being said, I want you to understand that God gave you this. And He entrusted this with you. He said, this is my beloved word. This is the truth of my word. This is your roadmap unto life. This is how you were to know how to get unto me. And he entrusted that to each and every one of us. And he requires that you and I take this book seriously. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, when we say faithful... We look at this in, in, in different, uh, in a multitude of different ways. If you get into the reading the, 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 the Constitution and the bylaws of the church, and if you want to get really technical, what it uh, re refers to as being a, a, a member in good standing, someone, uh, it, it goes into require you attend like 50% uh, of the services within a six month period. Biblically, that's nowhere close to what it should mean to be found faithful. All that being said, Maybe you're in a condition where you are unable to attend. Because that happens. 
But faithfully, you should pray for the growth and the spiritual growth and the development of the church. Whether you can be there or not, you should be able to attend spiritually because you should be praying for your brothers and sisters. Amen? Well, you are quiet on me this evening. Must be having a sitting in a church full of church people. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. We look at faithful, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind from, a, a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a person of society standpoint, when someone says faithful, we look at from a marriage perspective. Have they been faithful within their marriage? That's nowhere close to what we are talking about. If you get into the book, of the, if you begin reading in the book of Hebrews, and you believe it's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 or verse 27, 1, it says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That is a commandment to where it is biblical to attend church. There are people who say that it's not biblical to attend church. Well, I beg to differ. We are to be faithful. We are to be faithful to the body of Christ. It is required... Do you catch the word required? It is required of you and I to be faithful. It is not asked. It's not something that is pleaded with. It's not something that is begged and it's not really optional for God's people. We are to be faithful. You should want to be faithful. You know, at some point... Christ can look at you and say, enter in, see if you catch this, enter in thy good servant. Is that what the Bible says? No, but it says enter in thy good and faithful servant. That faithful is not optional for you and I. Because if you get into the book of Ephesians, it says we are saved by grace through what? Through works, through love, through nothing other than faith. We are to be found faithful. We are to be found faithful to our church. We are to be found faithful to our church members. We are to be found faithful unto the lost. We are to be found faithful unto what God has blessed us with. We are to be found faithful unto the reading of His Word. We are to be faithful in prayer. You are to be faithful to your family. You are to be faithful to your wife. You are to be faithful for all that God has given you. You, friend, are required to be found faithful. How many people work a job or have ever worked a job? Can you do what you want to when you get there? Can you work whatever days that you feel like working? If you go to work and you decide, well, I think I want to do this job today and make more money, can you just go do that and make more money? If you decide, well, I just want to do this today or I just want to do that, You don't have the luxury of doing whatever it is that you feel. No matter what society tells you. You are required, moreover, furthermore, diving even deeper. Let me explain further. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And that's not asking very much. If you had a car that only started sometimes, would you keep it? If when you sat down in your driver's seat, you had to pet the dash and talk to it real nice. Come on, Bess. Be good to me this morning. Just turn over when I turn the key. And it cranked and it whined and it moaned and you pumped the gas throttle and uh, you sat there and you crank it a little bit more. Would you keep that car? No. There ain't a one of us would sit here and keep that. If you had a lawnmower that never cut your grass, you wouldn't keep it. Friend, you and I are no different. We expect the things that we have to be faithful unto us in work. God expects His children to be faithful unto Him and work.
Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Now, are you to be faithful upon man's standards? Now, man's standards, now get this. I can base your faithfulness upon your attendance to this church. Is that what, uh, is that what it makes you faithful? Because you can attend this church every single time that the doors are open. You can come in no matter what's going on. You can volunteer to help no matter what's going on. You can always be a part of everything, but does that make you faithful? No, it sure does not. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a bunch of faithful people like you. But I want you to understand, you're not being faithful based upon my standards. You're not faithful, being faithful based upon your standards. Friend, you are to be faithful based upon the Word of God. You are to be faithful based upon what it is that the Word of God instructs you to do. Amen. You can show up here every single day. You can show up here seven days a week and you can sit in the parking lot and fast for an hour a day and do nothing but pray. But if you're doing that on your own accord and just because you won't want the appearance of it, that does not make you faithful. Anybody ever, ever had the problem that you just cannot go to sleep until you've prayed? Boy, I wish you guys would say yes. I wish the church would be like, Preacher, I have a problem every night. I can't sleep a wink until I have prayed. Friend, the problem is sometimes we fall asleep long before we even remember to pray. The Bible tells us we are to pray without ceasing. We are always to be in a mindset of being ready to be in contact with the Lord God Almighty. When we see a need, we shouldn't wait for someone to say, I need you to pray for this. We should automatically done ready to have prayed. Because I'm kind of somewhat prideful and stubborn, and I don't care a bit to tell you that. There ain't going to be very many times that I am going to ask you to pray for me. If you only pray for me whenever I ask for it, one, that's my fault, and two, shame on you. I need your prayers each and every day just to make sure that I am listening to what God directs. On top of all the other things that can go on in our life. But when it comes to things that are really going on, I'm kind of a private person. I don't really want everybody knowing my business. But you don't have to know my business to want to pray for me. I don't have to know your business to want to pray for you. I don't have to know the details. God already knows. God's already got the plan. God knows the solution. God knows how it's going to end. All I have to do is be willing to speak to him about it. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. I judge not my own self. We are not worthy to judge ourselves. However, judgment should begin at the house of God. Judgment should begin with us. I say all these things to, to uh, get going in this direction. I can't work where Jesus says, you, how can you uh, get the, the, the little bitty speck of dust out of your brother's eye when there's a large beam in your own that you can't see? Going back to that good old saying that I've heard from the time that I was born, people that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Let me, let me, let me break this down, make it a little bit easier to understand. Friend, you ain't no better than anybody else. You can drive by the, 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 the jailhouse and you can begin to think about the people that's in there and things that they've done, but let's just be uh, very clear in saying you ain't no better than they are. For I know nothing by myself. Based upon your own merit, how in the world do you know how to be Christ-like? You don't know anything by yourself. You don't know nothing by yourself on what it's like to be faithful. Because we're going to base it upon our standards. We're going to base it upon our merits. We're going to, be, we're going to base it upon solely upon how things appear. I know people that think way too much about how things look and how they appear. It's 
Skip down to verse 5 for me. It says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both bring the light to hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Let me break this down in a manner like this where we can talk about things that we are faithful to. Did you hear what so-and-so did last weekend? Boy, let me tell you. Oh, so-and-so, oh, Joe Bob over there, he told me that, that he was out with this person doing that. Now, we, friend, we are faithful. We are faithful to ringing a phone and talking about somebody. We are faithful to gossip. We are faithful to sticking our nose, quite frankly, where it has no business being anyways. We are faithful to these things. We are faithful to being busybodies in other men's matters. We are faithful to being idolaters. We are faithful into turning into the little g-gods. We are faithful to, I can say we. You may not like that, but the fact of the matter is, is that's a problem that we have. I'm not saying this church. I'm saying people. I'm saying Christians. I'm saying born-again believers. We have a problem remaining faithful unto God because the devil has so many things out there that's so appealing to us that we just have to stop and look at. You ever heard him say you can't enjoy nothing if you don't take time and stop and smell the roses? What if the devil planted them roses? Because you know the devil has everything out there that's appealing into our eyes and that looks pleasant for quite some time, does it not? Jesus said, straight is the gate, narrow is the way. And there's going to be few that find it. There's going to be few that stay on it. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. You ever just felt the need to issue a warning to a friend? You better be careful about dealing with so-and-so. No, they'll, they'll, they'll burn you. They're good for nothing. They'll rob you blind. Don't trust them. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. We should be willing to forgive. Amen. We should be willing to forget. Part of being that good steward is that we're not going to cast our pearls before the swine. Amen? Part of being good stewards into our brothers and sisters is looking out for one another. Amen? And I can think that I'm looking out for MD here by telling him not to deal with Melvin because Melvin's a liar and a cheater. And he ain't never done nothing. He's took me for a ride every time he's given the opportunity. But then if you get down to it and if you really begin asking me, you say, well, I don't really know. Uh, Bubba told me. And then I was going to talk to Bubba. Well, Bubba, how do you know? Well, David told me. Well, David, how do you know? Well, Jason told me. And before you know it, every person that's told you everything that you need to know about a certain individual actually knows absolutely nothing about the individual. Because we are faithful into the spreading of lies and misfortune. Hey friend, we are faithful sometimes to the backbiting of our brethren. Sometimes we are faithful to sowing discord amongst the brethren. By the way, God don't really like that. That's to put it lightly. Well, I know for a fact that when Bubba told me that, there was, a, there was deceit in his heart. I know for a fact that he didn't really mean he was sorry. He just said it because so-and-so made him. Do you really now? Since when did you have the ability to know the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart? One of my dearest friends that I have ever had has always thought... Not really that people was out to get him, but he just overthought everything. Well, did you see the way he smiled at me? Yeah. I wonder what he's plotting. What? What in the world are you talking about? Well, he ain't never just smiled and waved like that. What's he got up his sleeve? I'm telling you, I, I ain't got my, I, my tolerance is getting thin with him. I ain't got much. This is an actual conversation that I had because somebody did this. 
Now what in the world can you get from that? What in the world can you get? Where can you find this seat for me doing this? There is none. But yet we can think in our minds. We are faithful unto our own thoughts. We are faithful unto our own understanding that just because somebody is smiling and waving that they are now out to get us. Friend, we don't know these things. We must be faithful unto God that God is going to lead us into our paths of righteousness and He is not going to lead us into temptation. You must be faithful unto God. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness. I've heard a saying forever that uh, people that are out after 2 a.m. are up to no good. Well, some people get up really early to go to work, so that's a lie. I mean, we lump things into one, in just uh, the, an, an appearance, if you will. And we are faithful unto an appearance. Let me go a step further and explain this to you. Everybody knows that the majority of my clothes are like that. They are orange and they have a T on them. Well, there was one time that my wife, my beloved, sweet wife, Mindy, bought me a pair of Nike shoes, and they was gray and maroon. And if I had ever seen Georgia Bulldog shoes, these were Georgia Bulldog shoes. It was that color of red. And guess who wouldn't wear them? I was faithful to my appearance. I was faithful to my team. I wasn't going to be caught wearing no Georgia Bulldog shoes. They didn't have the G on it nowhere. But it was the way that it looked. I didn't want to confuse people and think, well, since when did you become a Georgia fan? I won't wear crimson because I don't want no one mistaking me as a Bama fan. You want to insult me at Christmas time? Buy me something crimson. That will hurt my feelings. But I want you to understand we should have every bit as much concern as not want anyone to think that we're anything other than God-fearing, God-believing Christian people. When you compromise one thing, just one thing, just one little bitty, tiny, minute, I, just little thing that means nothing, when you compromise that, you have given a crack in your life for the devil to come blaring through. And when you give in to one thing, that one thing turns into two. And before you know it, you are overwhelmed with concerning yourself with how things look. Well, I, can't, I mean, I can't let people in church know that. If you come into church on Sunday mornings and you smell like you worked at a brewery, what do you think people would think? Do you think that would hurt your testimony? Absolutely. Now there's some things that you don't really have to guess. Some things you can know. And yeah, accidentally you could have had a flat tire and bent down to change your tire and when you knelt down you, there was a beer can that was there and beer poured out all over you. Yeah, some things can happen. But I ain't never seen a beer spilled on a man's throat before so if it's on your breath, odds are you drank it. Therefore judge nothing before the time unto the Lord come who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that you might learn in us not to think, uh, get this, not to think of men above that which is written that not one of you be puffed up for one against another. I have seen church people so many times that are so faithful unto a man. And odds are they ain't got a clue in the world who God is. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You've sat in churches to where there's been men that stand in a pulpit, preach their heart out week after week, God calls them somewhere else, and then half the congregation goes with them. If you are faithful to a man, then the book that is laying in your lap means nothing unto you. You are putting more faith in a man than you are putting into God. 
we should all understand and have the same faith in knowing that if God puts a God-called preacher in your church, the souls can be saved the same as they was prior. But we put faith in men. Sometimes we put faith in men knowing that they can lead you down the wrong path. But that goes back into what we were just speaking of there a few minutes ago, that you don't really know the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart. But the things in your life should align with this. Amen. And if they do not, then friend, you have God has given you the sound mind that we spoke of this morning, the ability to make sound decisions. He has given you this book as a, as a, as a checklist for your life and for the lives of those around you. I can know God's people by their fruits. This book tells me that. I can take your word for it. Or I can take your life for it. Preacher, I'm faithful to my church. I'm faithful to this and I'm faithful to that. Well, funny thing is, friend, I don't ever see you there. They may not even attend this church, but what if they drive by and you're going to tell them that you're faithful to the church and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a devout Christian and they never see your car in the parking lot? That damages your testimony. That causes you to be a stumbling block into others. That can prohibit lost folks from coming in and being saved. All because we think that we're something that we're not, where it says men should not be puffed up, think more of themselves than they should. That's not only speaking to those people that are working, but that's speaking to those people whom are sitting. Just because you sit in a church house on a regular occasion don't make you in an imperfect fellowship with God Almighty. We're not to kid ourselves. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You are to be found faithful not unto men, not unto your friends, not unto your church family, not unto your pastor, but unto God Almighty only. When you are found faithful unto Him first, everything else will align in perfect order. Once we learn the order of events, everything else can become much more simple. <laughs> Ephesians 5.1 says this, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Followers of God as dear children. You ever concern yourself as to where you lead your kids? Is there a parent here who desires their child to spend an eternity in hell? Absolutely not. Is there a parent here who desires their child to join them in the kingdom of heaven to be able to sing praises unto God Almighty for an eternity? Is that where we would like to see our family? Or just as we are to follow God as dear, dear children, we should understand that our dear children will also follow us. They will follow your footsteps. They may, it may, you know, the, 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 this uh, old cliche saying that you might find in the Bible that says you're going to reap what you sow. They may not have seen where you walk, but understand this, friend, you will reap what you sow and your children will follow in our footsteps. Might we say, watch your step? Might we say, know where you're going? You might be able to live like there's no tomorrow. And for some, there may not ever be a tomorrow. Born again believers can have an eternity. Amen? Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. It is required of you, church, to be found faithful. 